What's up everybody, this is Frederick Murphy and we are here for Random Film Shit. We are walking around to the front of Mother Emanuel AME, which is, this is a church right here that in 2015, Dylan Roof, um, the jerk, Dylan Roof came and killed, unfortunately, um, some brothers and sisters that were here for service. Um, he had white supremacy ideologies, of course, and he played them out. Uh, but the thing is, he was here for a while with the individuals, with the parishioners. They prayed with him and everything, and he still didn't see their life valuable enough to save uh, by not killing them. So this is why we're here. I was the director of counseling at JCSU at the time, which is Johnson C. Smith University in Charlotte, North Carolina. And we had two individuals directly uh, affected there on the campus. One of them was um, uh, Malcolm Graham. Uh, and he's still there in the city of Charlotte in politics. And then I had a student whose mother unfortunately passed here as well. So even all the way in Charlotte, North Carolina, people were affected by this. Yo, it's crazy, man, like, and this cat drove all these miles away. This cat drove so many miles away from South Carolina to come and carry this out. It's just crazy. And then to be found at the drive-thru in Burger King, you know? I mean, it's so disrespectful. It is. You know what I'm saying? The way he was taken in, when you see nowadays people from African descent and how they're handled uh, with regards to, to crime in general. I mean, you can go take a Snickers bar, you know, you can be 13 year old doing dumb shit to take a Snickers bar and um, end up possibly getting killed. And this guy comes in here and murders all these individuals and has the ability to be taken without any type of harm um, into custody at a Burger King drive through So. It kind of lets you know where we're at as far as society with regards to racial relations and uh, the treatment of people from different backgrounds. So what we're doing right now is we're getting some B-roll footage for the documentary. The other side of the coin, race, generations, and reconciliation. So that's why we're here in Charleston. And to film another participant at the uh, Slave Dwelling Project. His name is Joseph McGill. So myself, Andrew, and James are gonna be sleeping in an actual existing slave dwelling. The slave dwelling is pretty much a, a house that a formerly enslaved individual lived in. Um, this specific project is bringing awareness to uh, slave dwellings. You know, when we go to places, we always see the big pretty uh, houses like you would think going in the wind, et cetera, et cetera, those plantations. But uh, Joseph McGill with the Slave Dwelling Project has done a great job of uh, bringing awareness to the uh, homes that were in the back of the big house uh, of the individuals that were enslaved who actually built the big house. This is where we're gonna be sleeping. So it, you gotta look at it during the time period, there'll be multiple families that will be sleeping in these dwellings. This was a former slave dwelling. As you see, they, they did modify some things later on in life. Here's another room. And here's another room. There are alligators that have been roaming the premises as well. So, alligators. yeah, alligators. So you come back here, and this is the back side of the cabin. There's a pond that's over there, and there's also a cemetery that's back there as well. So um, this is what life is going to be like for us. You know, we're just trying to pay homage and get as close as, as possible to the experience, but definitely not one that we will claim that we had experienced because that's just obviously not ever going to be the case thanks to their um, hard work, their resilience, and their desire for us to be free so we can do whatever it is that we want to do today. So we just had a fireside chat here at the Slave Dwelling uh, Project at Magnolia Plantations and Gardens, and uh, it was... It was deep, it was deep. We had an individual um, that was able to come out and felt that it's, it was safe enough for her to disclose that her father uh, is a Klan member and how she left home at a certain age. I think it was roughly around 13 years old, 13 or 15 years old. And uh, she was ended up being homeless, uh, but she was able to get things back on track. And that was 
due to the fact that she couldn't um, stay up under the house that was built on hate. It was very comforting to know that you have people from various different walks of life, various different backgrounds that, um, that even though you may look different, um, it identifies that individuals, regardless of how you look, still have struggles. And that was a very powerful session that we had tonight. But this is where we're sleeping. Tomorrow, we're looking forward to uh, filming Joseph McGill, the founder of the Slave Dwelling Project. And then we have a tree that's 400 years old that's over that way that we're going to also check out. So, um, yeah, it's been a good day, long day here in Charleston. Ate good, uh, had a couple drinks, uh, great conversation, meeting new people. And we're looking forward to running around the city on tomorrow. Thanks for joining us on this journey today. Peace. What's up everybody good morning uh, this is where we slept it was a rough sleep it was rough it was a lot of tossing and turning it was hot bugs we got a bird that's in there still um, frogs all around lizards here's one right here right so we had a person that was sleeping in here four of us were in there this room no one slept in but you know what, the, there was 13 children that was raised in this house after the emancipation of slavery um, by that family, the Leach family, um, that the wreath is on the wall. One of the things, as I kind of self-reflect this morning, um, we got up around seven o'clock, about 6.45 or seven o'clock. That would have never been afforded to the people that lived here. That would have never ever been afforded to the individuals that were here. Why? Because back here were rice fields This is where the white rice fields were, and this is where the individuals had to get up first thing and start working. One of the humbling things about this is understanding my own privilege and your own privilege, and that privilege is being able to sleep in on the weekend every now and then if you had the opportunity to. And these individuals are having to do this type of work, sleep on the floors with an abundance of individuals all around laying on the floor, but it's something that they were forced to do. It's not some, this isn't something that they asked for. Now that labor helped uh, create the economic fabric of this country. And we know this, every, every ounce of the institution of slavery, the country is still benefiting from it today because of the simple fact that everything uh, that was created in this country that has any type of economic prowess as far as commerce um, with regards to goods and things like that, it was cultivated by the enslaved individuals. Folks, we're back in Charlotte, North Carolina. The journey is over. Charleston has been absolutely great. Um, it has been a pleasure to take over Andrew's vlog. You know, we shot down to um, Charleston to uh, interview Brother Joseph McGill with the Slave Dwelling Project for the project, the uh, upcoming documentary, which will be released in spring of 2020, fingers crossed. So, you know, this has been fun. We ain't bathed in a couple of days, but that's because we have good reason because we slept in the slave dwelling. So thank you all for joining the journey. We appreciate it and look out for the documentary, The Other Side of the Coin, Race, Generations and Reconciliation. You can follow me at History Before Us on all platforms. The American South as we know it, Andrew and I's first project is out. You can go to americansouthfilm.com. Uh, currently, it has won four best documentary awards at film festivals. And actually, on next weekend, I'll be at the Tryon International Film Festival. They're located in Tryon, North Carolina, which is the birthplace of Nina Simone. So uh, thank you all for joining us on the journey. I hope I did not disappoint. This is my first go at this. Uh, peace and blessings. Shout out to the uh, Slave Dwelling Project for allowing us to have this experience. It's not one that uh, someone can say every day they have access to. You can find them at Slave Dwelling Project. On Instagram, it's at Slave Dwelling Project. On, the, on Instagram and on Facebook, it's the exact same thing. Mm -hmm.